Thank you so much for being here this morning. What a way to start off the service this morning, just singing praises to our God. And uh, I'm so thankful that you're here this morning. About 10 minutes before the service started, there was like 12 of us in here. So I appreciate everybody else coming. Uh, I was getting a little worried there for a few minutes, but uh, thank you so much for coming. We got a special day planned. We want to recognize some very, very wonderful people in the room today. And uh, we'll take time to do that here in just a few moments. But uh, before we do, let's have a word of prayer and ask God to bless this service. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you this morning, Lord, I'm sure if we went across this room, there would be so many things to pray for, uh, financial situations, health situations, um, Lord, maybe family situations that are happening. Uh, Lord, I just pray for even our own church family, uh, Lord, hearing some uh, bad health reports and those kinds of things. Lord, I just ask that we'll be able to just put those things at your feet today. And Lord, that we'll be able to just take a deep breath in this service and just be refreshed by what we hear. Uh, Lord, be refreshed by singing to you, giving back to you, listening to your word. And Lord, I just pray that every moment of this service would be pleasing to you and honoring to you. And Lord, may everything we do and say, may it glorify your name uh, in these few moments that we have together. We ask all these things in your precious son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's continue to stand. We'll sing Jesus Messiah.
guys enjoy this next song by the choir, Psalm 23. We're going to be uh, turning this into a congregational in a couple weeks, so uh, I hope you guys enjoy this song, Psalm 23. Thank you, choir. What a beautiful song uh, to sing this morning. Thank you, choir, for that. And looking forward to singing that as a congregation um, very soon. Psalm 23, one of the most famous passages of Scripture. And, uh, and every once in a while, somebody comes out with a new song uh, to help us remember these, these great passages of Scripture. Just want to give you some upcoming events. Of course, tonight at 530 is our next small groups. And uh, I hope that you're a part of a small group. I think we have, uh, Pastor Leo, do you know what, uh, how many folks have been coming on Sunday evenings, kind of an average? I thought you said 125 a couple weeks ago or something like that. 
um, with all the kids and stuff. So let's press that number. Let's keep on coming. Uh, I know in my class we've had, uh, we've increased both uh, weeks that we've had our class and uh, we're excited about tonight. Uh, and who's making the food? Is it Richie tonight? Making food? <laughs> Katie's making the food for Richie to bring to class. All right. So uh, we're looking forward to that, that Katie is making the, I was wondering what was happening there. So Richie said, I'll make it. And so it's you making it. Got it. And then, uh, of course, Wednesday nights is our regular clubs at 630, and that's a club for every age group, um, all the way from our nursery age kiddos all the way up to the adults. We have a club for everybody, and uh, something on their level, our four, five, and first grader, four-year-old, five-year-olds, and first graders, then our second through sixth graders are together, our seventh through twelfth graders are together, and then post-high school up uh, are here in the auditorium, and uh, we have a great time with all of those clubs uh, on the young people's levels. And then, of course, teen camp is coming, and you think, wow, it's not till June 8th. We're halfway through April. I cannot believe how fast this year is going already this year. Uh, and teen camp is June 8th through the 13th. You can see Brother Trout for more details. There is a sign-up sheet on the back table, and there is some information for you to take on what is expected for teen camp and uh, what they would need, uh, medical information, all of those things on there. Uh, if you would like for your young person to go to camp, see Brother Trout for more details on that. And then our teen formal banquets for our 10th through 12th graders. And uh, we love this every single year. We have uh, a banquet for these young people. And this year will be on Friday, May the 24th. And again, Brother Trout, uh, the youth pastor, will have more details. They're $50 a ticket, and uh, you can see him for those details. They have a great time. They leave here in the afternoon. They're gone all day uh, into the evening, and uh, they have a great time. I think they're going to Pittsburgh this year uh, for that formal banquet. So uh, make sure your young people are signed up for that. And then I'm going to turn it over to my wife. She's going to uh, do an announcement for our mother-daughter brunch and then also for fine arts. The front microphone there. Yep. We just wanted to extend an invitation for every lady, um, whether you're a church member, whether you're a visitor, um, we'd love to have you come to our mother-daughter brunch Saturday on May 4th. Um, we call it a mother-daughter brunch, but it's just a ladies thing. It's for um, children all the way to adults. And if you um, want to go online, you can use the, the app or you can use a QR code or just go to the website and tickets are available there. And if you get them before, uh, what's the date? April 20th, sorry, didn't bring my glasses. If, uh, if you get them before April 21st, they're only $12 a ticket, four and under are free. Um, and then if you go after April 21st, they jump up to $15. And we just encourage you to get them early because that helps us know how many to plan for food for. Um, if you've never been to one of our mother-daughter brunches, you have missed out. It'll be in the gymnasium here, and when you walk in, you'll have no idea it's even a gymnasium. And the food is unbelievable. The food, everything is game-themed this year. Um, we do a theme every year, and Miss Michelle everyone who knows the food there. The men volunteer to help usually so they can eat the food after we're done. And so that's how popular the, the food at the banquet is. Um, but we're asking um, for some help. We're having a table decorating contest. So if you are of the creative nature, I still have some tables available. Um, we're having a contest. You pick a game. Uh, so far, people have picked Candyland. I think we have Life. We have Mario Kart. We have Scrabble, so there's some, they're getting picked, so you want to get on it real quick. But you pick a game theme, and you're going to decorate your table according to that theme, and then the best table is going to win. The person who decorates the best table is going to win $250. So if you're interested in uh, participating in that contest, I have some papers, and I can hand you, you know, how many plates you'll need, how many of all that things. Um, you can see me after the service and grab one of those. And then um, we want to also invite you to BBCA's Fine Arts Night. Our, um, our 7th through 12th graders are going to be putting on a spectacular show on Friday night, April 26th from 6 to 9, right in here, and also in the gym. They're doing art pieces, photography. Some have made sculptures. They're going to be doing speeches, singing songs, playing instruments, it's doing plays. It's going to be a fabulous night. So we want all of our church family to come and support them on that. We'll have a few fundraisers going on through that, some desserts for sale, some concessions, and that's going to, the money earned for that will go to help our fine arts program at the school. So we would really love for you to come to that. All right, men, if you'll come ahead, we'll take up this morning's offering. 
You'll see on the screen there different ways to give um, if you're in the auditorium here, also at home. It's getting to be a place where probably over, probably about 40% of our giving, maybe 35% of our giving uh, is being done online. So we appreciate uh, that comes in so faithfully and uh, you can do those recurring. You can get on the website and figure all that out. And I know my wife and I, this is the first thing we do on Thursdays when the check lands uh, for us is we get online and we make sure that uh, we give to the Lord, give to his house. And uh, I hope that you've come ready to do that today. You don't have to, if you're visiting with us, we do not expect you to uh, do anything today. This is an opportunity for our regular folks to give. And uh, we just thank you for being here today and being a part of our services. Uh, Brother Mel, would you just uh, ask a God's blessing on this morning's offering, please? Heavenly Father, once again, we just want to thank you for this opportunity that you've given us where you give back to you freely, the way you've really blessed us. And uh, we continue to see this ministry thrive. We know we've got community care just starting up this past week, and we're looking forward to uh, continue the missionary support of the many missionaries that we have throughout this land, and even help our young people go to the Christian school here. So once again, may all the monies come in to take care of all these needs, and we continue to see great and mighty things happen in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand, guys, we're going to sing this morning. Holy, holy, holy. Morning. Holy, holy, holy,
let's stay standing. We're going to sing, Jesus, your mercy. Jesus, your mercy. seated. In just a few moments, we're going to introduce those who are here today as our first responders. And uh, what a joy it is to have you in our services. Uh, some of our own folks are first responders, and uh, they have invited maybe some of their friends, uh, some of their co-workers, and uh, we're going to recognize those folks here in just a few moments before we do, we're going to hear a special <laughs> Come back on up, and uh, we'll sing, I Belong to Jesus.
Jesus, the cross that once was mine. Great job, guys. Wonderful song. I belong to Jesus. I belong to him. What a great reminder this morning that we belong to Jesus. Well, if you're here this morning and you are what we consider a first responder, and that would include our uh, dispatchers, our corrections officers, our EMTs, our nurses and doctors, uh, then our firefighters, our police, our active military, uh, if you fall into one of those categories, first of all, we want to say thank you, but then we'd also like you to come on up, and we have a gift for you this morning, so please stand if you're a first responder. I know nobody wants to be the first person standing. Let's go ahead and stand. All right. You got stand. All right. Good, good, good. And uh, if you'll come ahead, uh, we want you guys to come on up on the platform. Come on ahead. The bad thing about doing a first responder uh, Sunday um, is I was told about four people that were coming this morning and got called in to work <laughs> uh, as first responders. So uh, come on up on the platform. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Where's the first responders from over here? Come on. Where are you guys at? Come on up. Come on up. All right. So we're going to go, I'm going to turn on this microphone here, Pastor Lear, and I would like to, for you to introduce yourself. I know that's not part of the deal, but uh, <laughs> we'd like you to introduce yourself and just let us know what area that you, um, if you want to tell us where or uh, how many years. I'm Daniel. Uh, I work in correction, six years now. In corrections? Awesome. Uh, Joe Flory, work for Blairsville Borough Police. Oh, man. Eight years, and then uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections, about the same amount of time. And you have the chief here. The Blairsville uh, police chief is here. And uh, you didn't know, he, did you know he could sing? He said, I told him he's ready for uh, America's Got Talent. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, sir. Yeah, I'm John Murphy. I work for the city of Greensburg. 
Uh, I've been there about three years, and before that, I worked in Ligonier. As a police officer. Yes. Awesome. Uh, Lou Sacco. I'm the chief of police in Blairsville. I've been in law enforcement for 35 years. Wow. I was an EMT for nine years and a firefighter for three years. Hey, Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, Fran Hyrack. I'm in corrections. Uh, been about 12 and a half, 13 years. Hey, Amen. I'm Jordan Donnelly. I'm a nurse at Latrobe ER, and it's like nine months. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Dawson Horner. I was a cadet for the Pennsylvania State Police. I started in February. Okay. Uh, Richie Eichenberg, Pennsylvania National Guard for seven months now. Six years of my life eventually, but seven months now. <laughs> Katie Eichenberg, um, Latro BR, four years. Carolyn Hederman, been a nurse for 39 years. Cheryl Shin, um, nurse, Westmoreland, 25 years. Wow. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Lear, uh, nurse for 24 years. Hey, Amen. Matt Schwender, past no, number. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. All right, so what we want to do, um, if I could have Brother Derek, if you'll come ahead. Uh, Joe, if you want to come ahead. Uh, if you folks don't mind just to stand down here, we're going to get a gift bag, a Bible, and a coin for you. Uh, and so if you'll just line up right across the front here, and then that'll give us access to those things and be able to give you guys a gift, if you want to help me with that real quick. Actually, you're a... You're, all right, everybody gets a bag. Um, start taking the coins. I'll take the Bibles. Awesome, awesome. Perfect. So every person this morning that is here as our first responders, um, we have a new Bible for you. And we have a bag of gifts and we also have a coin, and on that coin, Chief, if you'll let me see that real quick, uh, it has, um, in this family, no, yeah, no one fights alone, and then it has all of the corrections, uh, dispatchers, EMS, uh, military, firefighters, police, uh, all those, and that's a commemorative coin for you guys. Um, a bag of gifts, and then I want to present every person with a new Bible. And if you have one, you can pass this along to somebody uh, that might not have a Bible, but we wanted to make sure that you have the gift of God's Word also today. Absolutely. Let me get some more Bibles here, Brother Joe. Ooh, ooh. Sorry, we're just very organized is what we are. <laughs> can just sense the organization. All right. Thank you, guys. Does everybody have a coin? Does everybody have... Did you guys get coins? Yes. All right. Perfect. Well, I want to say thank you so much for being here, for letting us recognize you today. And uh, we realize there's others uh, that were going to be here this morning, and they're out on the front lines and uh, responding right now as we speak. And uh, so we thank you for what you do. You put yourself in harm's way every single day. I was thinking about our corrections officers um, being first responders inside of our prisons uh, when there's problems happening, our chiefs, our officers, our nurses. Um, there's not one position in this line that is more important than any others. Uh, when we talk about first responders, it doesn't work unless everybody does it. And uh, I think it's a wonderful thing for our church to be able to see these heroes uh, that roam around our community uh, on a daily basis. I think it would be appropriate if we stood and gave them a wonderful hand this morning. Thank you. You are priceless to this community and we thank you so much. If you want to have a seat, thank you so much for being here this morning. And uh, I'm going to preach a message here. What a blessing to have these folks here this morning. And uh, we have four other opportunities this year uh, for Friend Days. And uh, we'll have a different aspect of our community each and every time. Maybe it'll be Neighbor Sunday, those kinds of things. But these will not go to waste. We are actually going to deliver those to other um, police stations, uh, people in hospitals, uh, doctors, nurses, those kinds of things. So uh, we'll definitely be able to 
get those and uh, give those out to other people. Um, I believe that there was a card on the front of that bag. If you wouldn't mind uh, just to fill that out by the end of the service, and then you can just hand it to one of the people in the back of the auditorium um, at the end of the service, if you don't mind, to fill out the card that was given to you on that bag there. If you wouldn't mind to take the Word of God this morning and turn to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1 this morning. For those that are visiting with us today, we have been going chronologically through the life of Christ. Um, we obviously around Christmas time were uh, talking about his birth and those kinds of things. But as the new year rolled around, uh, our theme this year is following him, fishing for them. And so the Bible tells us Jesus looked at his disciples, the people he was calling, and he said, follow me. And then from that point on, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Uh, people that, uh, that need to know about Jesus, people that need to know about God, people that need to know about the things of God. And the Bible shows us that Jesus was very interested in people knowing the message that he was bringing, but also to pass that message on to his followers so that when he was gone, that message would continue on even to this day. In Mark chapter 1, verse number 40 is where we're going to start. We stopped at verse number 39 last week, and that was our, uh, our lesson that we had uh, talked about uh, where Jesus walked into Simon's house and he heals Simon's wife's mother uh, of, a, of a great fever. And then people were coming to him uh, throughout the evening and nighttime and uh, learned some amazing lessons there uh, about Jesus being our healer physically and spiritually, uh, Jesus teaching us the value of prayer. Even Jesus himself, the Bible says, withdrew himself from the crowd so that he could go to a place and pray by himself. Uh, and he also teaches us the importance of preaching. Uh, the Bible says that he, they said, stay here, heal more of us, heal more people, do more miracles. And Jesus said, I've got to go and preach into the synagogues of Galilee. And, uh, and so his the importance was not only uh, being with the people, but also making sure that they heard the message uh, that he was there to bring. And so as we go to Luke chapter 1 and verse number 40 this morning, it says this. It says, And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will, be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city." but was without in desert places. And they came to him from every quarter. This passage of scripture uh, is just like Mark. Uh, we're only coming to the end of chapter one and we see so much happening uh, in the book of Mark so quickly. There's so much activity happening and it shows us the, the way that Mark wanted to portray Jesus was not only as the son of God, but that he was also a servant, that he came to serve, uh, not only to seek and to save that which was lost, but also the Bible says that Jesus was here to teach us how to serve. Uh, he says to his disciples at one point, he says, you've heard it amongst the Gentiles that, that it's the person up top tells everybody else what to do. And he said, but I, I want to teach you a different way, that the person up top is the person who serves those beneath him the most and sets the example of spiritual servant leadership. And so as you come to Mark chapter 1 and verse number 40, you're seeing another one of these instances where Christ is uh, taking his time with people taking his time uh, with this leper. 
And, and the Bible shows us that uh, if you study the Bible at all or you're a student of the Bible, uh, you'll realize very quickly as you're studying the Bible that leprosy uh, was not something that was to be fooled around with. Leprosy was one of those diseases, if you got it in the Bible days, there was no cure. Uh, there, was no, uh, there was nothing that they could do for you once you had leprosy. And uh, it was one of those diseases that was a hopeless disease. Uh, you would just simply, you weren't helpless, uh, you were hopeless. Uh, if you got this disease, it would uh, eventually, uh, they call leprosy the reverse disease. Uh, usually uh, there's a, a pain that happens that tells you something is wrong. With leprosy, it kills all the pain receptors so that you uh, incidentally hurt yourself and do things to yourself without even knowing it because those pain receptors are gone. And so it's a disease where, uh, where fingers fall off and, and, and they've said noses and ears and all different parts of the body uh, that just uh, are decaying uh, and not, not getting better. And so that's the disease that Jesus is dealing with here. It's a person who literally came to him hopeless, uh, that had no hope in getting better. Uh, there's, there's kind of diagnoses like that these days, not as many, obviously, and I'm thankful for our first responders and those that are in the medical fields and those kinds of things that are making progress on diseases and progress on things, uh, that, uh, that can be healed even now, but there are certain diagnoses even today that if you have that, it's kind of a hopeless a hopeless uh, disease. It's kind of a hopeless moment uh, that you have that. Uh, and I was looking back and I was um, on leprosy and I was studying again in Leviticus chapter 13 and 14. It actually talks about seven different forms of leprosy, seven different kinds of leprosy that you could get. And, uh, and very easily transmittable. Uh, and of course, these were the people that were taken outside the city. They were taken outside the camp. They were taken outside of the, uh, where everybody else was living. And they would actually have colonies where they would be by themselves. They would live uh, with other people that had leprosy. And it was kind of a death knell. It was kind of the, uh, the hopelessness uh, that came with the disease. You were uh, secluded and isolated with other people. Uh, uh, that had the same thing as you, and that's the setting of this person coming to Jesus. A form of leprosy that was non-curable, something that uh, he had no hope, but he heard about Jesus. And that's the wonderful thing is, is when you hear uh, these stories and you read these stories in scripture of how people came to Jesus without hope. They had no hope. And when they came to Jesus, there was hope. I put this down first. Christ welcomes this kind of request. Christ welcomes this kind of request. Have you ever had something where you don't know what to do with it? You don't know uh, how you're going to get through a situation, how you're going to get past this financial situation, how this uh, sickness is going to get any better, how is this family situation going to change, how is my work situation ever going to get better, am I going to get another job, am I going to get a raise, am I going to be able to provide for my family? Listen, you know who wants you to come to him? Jesus. Jesus was not put off by this man. Jesus did not, uh, actually people of that day would have a, a, in their pockets, they would carry small stones. And you know why they would carry small stones? So that if a leprosy person came anywhere near them, they would throw stones at them to keep them at a distance. That's the way that people treated these people. This was, not, uh, this was not a disease that happened. It was like, well, you know, we, we'll be all right. We're going to get through this. No, and basically they would say that this is a, a corpse, a dead corpse walking. It was just a matter of time uh, before you would uh, just die uh, from the, the injuries and the things that you had. But this kind of request that I see in this is, number one, a humble attitude. Look at this man. He says, and there came a leper to him beseeching him and kneeling down to him. This is a humble attitude. And can I say to you, when we come to God, when we come to Jesus, when we come to our Savior, we should come with a humble attitude. 
We should come with an attitude that says, I, I can't figure this out by myself. I can't provide for myself. I can't, I can't make myself better. I can't, make my, I can't get myself to heaven. How am I going to do that? And as you look at Jesus, it, it, you see this man come to Jesus with a humble attitude, but also an honoring attitude acceptance look at this he says beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him if thou wilt if thou wilt he gave him honor if thou wilt thou can cleanse me he he he, he simply was putting the matter into jesus's hands i can't do it i haven't been able to do it this is how far i've gotten with this disease myself but if you will do it if you'll cleanse, cleanse me, if you'll heal me, if you will, then I'll be clean. And I, I love this, his humble attitude, his acceptance, but then his honest admission, thou canst make me clean. One of the greatest things you'll ever learn is coming to Jesus and not coming to him as if you can do it, but coming to him as if only he can do it. Jesus is that way Christ welcomes this kind of request what's going on in your life right now I I don't know everybody in here I don't know your story I don't know what's happening in your life but I do know this that Jesus welcomes you to come to him the Bible says that that he the one of the reasons that God sent Jesus to this earth was because he was not willing that any should perish he doesn't want one person to end their life on this earth not knowing Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. He's not willing that any should perish. So when Jesus came and Jesus started his ministry, he said this. He, he said, I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. And so when Jesus is, is, is having his ministry, and, and we're just at the beginning of his ministry, probably just a few months, maybe even a year into his ministry, of his three and a half years of ministry, but as we're watching Jesus' ministry over and over and over and over, he let people come to him and make requests and, and, and ask him things and ask for healing. And, and what a, this man that comes to him teaches us such a humble attitude. I can't do this. I can't, I can't make this happen. I can't heal myself. So what does he do? With a humble attitude, you can do it. I've heard you can do it, and I'm trusting that you can do it. Christ welcomes this kind of request. This man, a leper, with no hope, beseeching him, kneeling down to him, and saying, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And I love this, the second thing I see, Christ is the only one that could have had these results. Christ is the only one, watch, watch what Jesus says. And Jesus moved with compassion, moved with compassion. And I love this, it says, put forth his hand and touched him. You know the one thing you would never do with a leprosy person? You would never want to touch them. It, it's contagious. You would, you would, uh, you would receive the leprosy. You would, it would be, uh, you would catch the leprosy. It would start in your body if you touch them. And the Bible says that Jesus was so moved with compassion that he touched him. And I just tell you today that no matter what you know about religion or what you know about the Bible or what you know about church. I can tell you this, if you'll go to God's word, you'll find out that God is the only one that has these results. That Jesus Christ is the only one that could have had these results. Being moved with compassion and not just moved. I'm sure there was other people that were empathetic. Could you imagine this man was probably somebody's husband? I'm sure uh, his, his wife uh, was probably moved with compassion. She was probably empathetic. She was probably sad. I'm sure he had friends that would have, man, man, uh, Jeff, if, man, if, if I would take that for you if I could. I'm sure there were sympathetic and empathetic people around him. But when Jesus is moved, the Bible says he touched him. Nobody else could do that. Nobody else could touch him and, and, and not get the disease. Jesus touched him and cleared the disease. 
Christ is the only one who could have these results. And listen, my friend, I don't know where you are in life or what you've tried in life or where you're going in life. I I don't know all those things, but I do know this, that at any moment, on any day, you can come to Jesus and he will accept you. He will love you. He will listen to you. And he will. Uh, Listen, I I have sicknesses and and our church knows about these things. And some people in this room have things that they've had for years and you've had situations, family situations you've had for years. And and sometimes it's like, well, why why hasn't my situation changed yet? Why why is it this person got better, but I didn't? Listen, Jesus didn't promise me that I'd have clean bill of health when I got saved. He promised me a home in heaven for eternity. That's what he's promised me. His grace gives me heaven. His mercy keeps me out of hell. He did not promise me that I'd have good health. And sometimes people, when they come to Jesus, they think that everything in this life is supposed to be wonderful. No, everything in this life is not going to be wonderful. The Bible says it rains on the just and on the unjust that there's pain for, there, there's wickedness in the world and there's, there's good in this world. And those things happen. I, I remember somebody, I was, uh, when I was a teenager, I was out with w- one of my friends and, and we were talking to this lady at a door and, and she was like, she was, he was talking about salvation and, and she asked this question. She said, will my life get better if I get saved? And he said, yes. And then she said, will my marriage get better if I get saved? And he said, yes. We got away from that door. I said, what's wrong with you? That's not what we tell people. (laughs) Is your marriage probably going to get better because you have Jesus? Yeah, it would. But that's not why you get Jesus. Well, it's not why we trust Jesus. We trust Jesus because we're sinners. We trust Jesus because we have come short of the glory of God. We, we come to Jesus because for all of eternity, we'll spend eternity in hell if we do not accept his son's payment, Jesus Christ's payment. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And yes, I want people's life to get better, but it's, it's not... It's not the promise that life, you can have life more abundantly, but the promise of Jesus Christ is, I died for you, and if you accept me, then I'll give you eternity in heaven. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ is the only one that can have these results. Moved with compassion, touch this man. And number three, if I could just say it this way, the Bible says that he saith unto him, see thou say nothing to any man. Sometimes people are very puzzled. Why would Jesus not want people to witness for him? But if you understand what I was just saying, that's why. Because Jesus didn't want people coming to him because he was a miracle worker. He wanted people to come to him because he was the Messiah. And when people were spreading the message, they were saying, I was blind and now I'm not. Go to that guy. I was was lame on my feet, but I went to that guy and now I'm not. And Jesus was saying, don't tell anybody because Jesus wanted to spread the message, not just miracles. And yes, how many have ever seen miraculous things happen in your life? You've seen miraculous things happen. Yes, if you are a child of God, you will see miraculous things in your life. You will see Jesus provide. You will see God do amazing things. But Christ is our Savior, not just a miracle worker. He is our Savior. He is the person who gave his life and shed his blood on the cross so that you and I could come to him and accept him and trust him as our personal savior. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the father, but by me. And so we come to Jesus, not just because he's amazing and not just because he's almighty and not just because he can do miracles. We come to Jesus because he's our savior. And uh, I think sometimes when people come to Jesus, they first of all want Jesus to be their miracle worker and then be their savior. But the truth is, is Jesus wants us to come to him for us to have him as our savior and then watch and see miraculous things happen in our life for all of our days. My friend, I don't know where you're at in life today. 
But I do know that this man showed up to Jesus that day hopeless. And he walked away whole. He, walked, he came to Jesus hopeless, not knowing what, what the next day held, if he was going to die the next day, if he was going to be uh, banished and, and he was going to get worse and, the, and his health would be even worse. This man came to Jesus hopeless and walked away whole. And maybe you're here today and you would simply just have a humble attitude and come to the Lord today and ask for his help. Maybe you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Maybe uh, you've been in church most of your life, and you know that if you were to die today, heaven's your eternal home, Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. But maybe you're sitting here today, and you've come to Jesus today and come to church today, and basically you would just describe your life as hopeless right now. Well, I would just say to you, if Jesus is involved, it's not hopeless. If Jesus is involved, it's never hopeless. Christ welcomes you to come to him today and trust him. Trust him with all of your heart. Trust him with your life. I trust him with my sicknesses. I trust him with my diseases. I just, I've trusted him with everything in my life. And I remember when I was a young man, I trusted Jesus Christ to be my personal savior. And I trusted him to take me to heaven when I die. And that's never, that's never ended. That's never stopped. God's never taken that away. He said when he gave it to me that he would seal that in me until the day I go to heaven. And so if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, if you would say that your situation is pretty hopeless, I'm just asking you today, would you let Jesus in? Would you let Jesus speak to that? Would you let Jesus have your situation? I promise you, if you do, it doesn't, your life doesn't automatically, everything gets better and all of your prayers are answered and all the miracles come true. But I can tell you this, the greatest miracle you'll ever experience is the day that you trust Jesus Christ as your personal savior and you're assured for all eternity that heaven's your home because Jesus Christ is your savior. I pray that today, if you don't know that, today would be that day. And realize that Christ, no matter what else you're trusting, no matter who else you've trusted in the past, Christ is the only one that can have these kind of results. Would you stand together with me for a word of prayer this morning? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for being here, being our visitor. Thank you, church family, for being faithful. But I truly would say that this is probably one of the most important moments of the week in our church's life. It's when we come to the Lord at the end of hearing his word and hearing a message from him and seeing if there's something in our lives that God would want us to make a decision about. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I don't want to embarrass anybody. I'm not, nobody looking around, nobody's calling out anybody's name. Even if I knew it, I would never want to embarrass anybody on purpose. But I would ask you this. How many would say today you absolutely know without a shadow of a doubt Jesus Christ is your Savior and heaven is your eternal home? Would you quietly just raise your hand? Awesome. You can put your hands down. Thank you so much. Would there be anybody after hearing the message today, maybe, maybe it's you're from a different religious background or just really haven't been a part of a church, but after hearing the message today, you know that Jesus Christ is the way of salvation. That's what the Bible says. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Would there be anybody here who say, I've never started a relationship with Jesus Christ. I I'm, I'm struggling with that idea, and I'd sure like for you to pray for me, preacher. I'd sure like to talk to somebody about that at some point, but would you pray for me? I do not know if I die today that heaven's my eternal home, Jesus Christ my Savior. Would you quietly raise your hand let me pray for you? I will not call out your name. Thank you so much. Thank you for your courage. Thank you. Some did that even last week. You called upon the name of the Lord to be saved, and you trusted him to save you, and we're so thankful for that. And others are raising their hand. Anybody else who say, I don't know for sure if I die today that heaven's my eternal home, Jesus Christ my Savior. How many would say this this morning? I know Jesus Christ. I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but I realize today 
that I need to get back closer to him. I need to be in his word. I need to be in church. I need to be around friends and family, and I, I need to get back closer to the Lord in the days ahead. Would you quietly raise your hand? Just ask for prayer. Say, I just need to do that in the days ahead. Thank you so much. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for every person that's raised their hand today. Lord, I would pray that that they would have the courage if, if they would like to talk to somebody, that they would be able just to go to that person and talk and, and be able to ask those questions and uh, find out those answers, Lord. But those who have raised their hands said, I just need to get back closer to the Lord. Lord, would you help them on that journey? Would you give them the help and the, and the grace and the strength and the wisdom that they need to find that place, whether, whether it's here or somewhere else, Lord? Would you help them to get faithful and be able to, uh, Lord, raise their families and uh, Lord, just see amazing things for your honor and glory in the future. Lord, I pray for every person that is here today that you would protect us this week, that you would, uh, Lord, show us your love and your kindness and your favor and your blessing. But Lord, in those moments where we feel hopeless, Lord, I pray that we would turn directly to you and realize this, this man who was hopeless, who had leprosy, who truly was hopeless health-wise, turned to you. And he was miraculously healed. Lord, I pray that no matter how hopeless our situation looks today, may we turn to you and realize that you will be in the middle of every single situation and helping us, Lord, encouraging us, strengthening us. And we ask these things to be done for this week, for your honor, for your glory. Bring us back together safely at the next appointed time. In your precious name, I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, again, if you, um, somebody said they needed to grab one of these. Uh, if you know of anybody else that, um, that is a, a family, like a family member or somebody very close to you that you would like to take a set of these gifts, um, if you'll just come up and see me after church, uh, we'll go ahead and get you one of those uh, so you can give to them. All right. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Bye now. <laughs>